uh, super funds uh, have to have an auditor, and that's in the legislation, so they have to have it. Uh, the question becomes, why do they have to have it? I suppose it's not really a, a funny uh, answer to that, but, but there's a reason for it. Uh, and the reason for it is that uh, in Australia, um, there's a huge amount of money tied up in super funds. And this money is uh, there to help the government uh, in the respect of, uh, if it wasn't there, then the, the pension bill, when people age and had to go on to retirement, would be much, much higher. Uh, and so what the government has done within the super legislation is to create the requirement for an audit to uh, ensure that those funds are properly invested and being used for the right purposes. Uh, because with all that money there, the temptation would be absolutely fantastic for people to put their money into their super fund and then use it for a, a purpose which they uh, they had in mind. So it perhaps was not uh, in line with their retirement. So uh, so that's why basically the reason that we have to have an audit. And then the the, uh, the government then has put in the SIS Act that the auditor has to be appointed to the super fund and prior to the legislation that's going to be the audit. Um, so so that's, uh, that's the the rationale behind it. Um, you could say, well, you know, yeah, that's inconvenient, it's going to cost, and who wants to spend time talking to their auditor? Uh, I could uh, I could empathise with all those arguments. But on the other hand, um, we do have a fairly robust system which is protecting a fund for retirement, and it's important for Australia's uh, overall economy to have these super funds there to help people when they retire. And uh, it does help people in a lot of other ways as well, like um, if they're uh, permanently disabled, or, or otherwise um, uh, and draw the money out for a reason that's a proper reason. Uh, and um, another thing the auditor does is that they do actually look over the fund and they they check for things which uh, which could possibly be going wrong. Um, you know, that, uh, sometimes um, some people have met with some sort of uh, uh, con men and, and such like, and unfortunately there's been a few cases of that. And um, uh, they, you know, at least if you have the auditor there looking over at some stage, they might be able to say, well, hey, hey, hang on a minute, this particular investment advisor is not registered properly and uh, and they're not licensed to give this advice they're giving you, and so it'd be very questionable whether you know, you know, anybody would be uh, wise to deal with them any further. And and uh, otherwise, you know, some some money drawers have just been absolute scams. Uh, and so that's not to say that the auditor is going to pick it all up, but the auditor is going to, you know, should should be a qualified accountant and somebody with a bit of background with uh, looking at things that can go wrong with with any sort of financial entity, and uh, and and hopefully we'll be able to flag some things for for the members. And I think that you know it's not such a bad thing really because uh, some uh, some uh, mum and dad the uh, trustees they're not uh, financially uh, educated in a higher level and. Uh, uh, that's all good and well, but uh, maybe that uh, for the normal investment, that's fine. They're dealing with a bank or something like that, you know, no problem. But there's sometimes that some sometimes the con man has a scam and they get talked into it. Um, hopefully, audit will help with this sort of situation as well. So actually, there, there's a few benefits in it. Uh, even though yes, it's an, an added job and it's an added responsibility, um, audit is trying to help. And yes, uh, as uh, recently came in, uh, that, well, there's, there's always been some requirements and various educations on, but uh, uh, the recent changes uh, that you have to be registered with ASIC now for, specifically to have a license to audit a SMSF, and um, that uh, means that uh, the persons have to have done a course which, or generally means they've, they've done a course which specifically makes them, um, uh, you know, specific rules and things relating to super funds. Uh, which specifically teaches all those rules and things and some of the issues about it. Well, what, uh, what the auditor does is the auditor writes a report and um, the report uh, basically says uh, two things. Uh, thought. Uh, it says that the financial statements are a true and fair view. That is, in other words, they're true. For instance, um, you might have $100,000 Dollars in the bank, you wouldn't want the financial statements to say it's fifty thousand. If it's a hundred, you know they have to say what's true. And the other thing that it says is that the SIS uh, trustees have complied with the SIS Act for um, the duration of the year in the audit, um, and, or if they haven't, it will mention that they haven't. 
So that's basically the, uh, the function of the audit, is to the auditor conducts the review and then they, it gets to the point where he, he she, he slash she, when I say he, uh, it gets, he, she gets to a point uh, where they can make this view and then they write the report to state that. And in 99% of cases, I'm sure it will be uh, a, an unqualified report which simply says it, the financial statements are true and that they, the persons have complied with the, with the um, uh, rules of the CISA. Now with the, with the cost, of course, uh, uh, that, um, that depends on the various orders and, and their charging um, schemes and, and things like that. But generally speaking, um, uh, the, um, you know, the auditor has to be insured and, and the auditor, auditor has to uh, uh, have, you know, put some time into the audit. So generally speaking, um, you know, the, the auditor is going to be considering uh, the, the risk and the, and the insurance and also the, the time involved. And um, uh, uh, I'm not sure nowadays, but you know, most of, you, know, you, you probably know roughly what your accountants charge, and they'd be expecting a, a few hours to go into an audit. So um, that that would give you perhaps a bit of an idea. And and each uh, accountant uh, can can charge, uh, you know, as as I suppose as their policy is. But there's also tend to be a bit of a market uh, average as well. Um, so 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 yeah, that that, that gives you a system. But then um, the, the size of the fund can be a big factor as well. Um, I mean, a lot of mums and dads and, and things have got funds with you know a, a couple of hundred or a few hundred thousand, and it depends their age and, and so on. But yeah, you know, that, that's not much, and I wouldn't be expecting a bigger fee for that. But uh, now we're starting to see the funds coming through with the ten and twenty million dollars in them as well, and that becomes a serious audit uh, <laughs> because that's a lot more money involved and. And when something goes wrong, of course, you know, you, you've got to consider there's going to be lawyers and fees and things like that. There's, there's a lot more. And, and lot, the insurance are not going to just take a light view of that either. They're, they're going to want to talk to you about those, those bigger funds and they take them on. So, um, of course, it costs a bit higher. But, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope we have a few people out there with those big funds. <laughs> but for the, the rest of us mortals, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it should be a few hours, I should think. Yeah, um, look, you know, the accountant is basically um, assisting the trustee. So uh, a trustee could be mum and dad or a plumber or someone, and, and they've got a fund. So they obviously they don't want to prepare it themselves. They're busy doing whatever they do. And so they bring it to the accountant who's experienced in, in producing the accounts for these uh, super funds. And he'll, the key slash she, will uh, sit down and prepare the accounts. Now the auditor is uh, required to be independent from the accountant who prepares them uh, because there, it's basically a checking thing. Um, because the accountant who prepares it is in leagues with, uh, with the trustee, he's basically the, not quite the employee but the contractor to them and assisting them, then um, the auditor is a, a third party from outside uh, and who uh, is not in the fund and, and has no interest in the, in the fund in any shape or form. Um, and uh, is simply just commenting on it as an outsider. So uh, you, it, the independence comes in there, and that's why uh, generally uh, the accountant who prepares the tax will be someone different to uh, the accountant who prepares the audit. And of course, the auditor has to be qualified to do that as well uh, with assets. Yeah, so uh, well, generally speaking, um, first of all, you need to, to find an auditor. Uh, my business is called Auditor Online and can easily be found on the web, auditoronline.net. Um, you, you need to locate one and there could be a, a number that uh, you might find uh, if you look around who can do that. Then you need to ask them um, whether they're prepared to accept the audit. And um, you know, that the auditor themselves will first of all consider whether there's any conflict of interest or reason uh, not to uh, accept the audit. The auditor will then, uh, uh, under the standards, be required to contact the previous auditor. And, uh, and find out um, whether there's anything strange about the fund that they are shopping for auditors. You know, maybe there's been uh, some uh, some breach or something or other, and they're trying to speak it on the, the carpet or whatever. So uh, the auditor would contact the previous auditor, and uh, they would tell them if there's anything like that. And if it's uh, if it's not, if it's just pure business, uh, there's a, a lot of good reasons to change the auditor. You know, move the dress. Um, I don't know, didn't see eye to eye with the other auditor or 
you didn't think they were um, doing the best job that you could find if you looked at There's a, a hundred good reasons for doing it, and, and once you've got one of those, then the auditor, the next auditor after being approached and have, after checking with the first auditor would, uh, would offer to accept the audit and send a, an engagement letter to you. Um, and then once the engagement letter is signed, then the, uh, that new auditor will be appointed the auditor. Mm -hmm.